In this tutorial, we're still gonna solve problems about projectile motion but in the context of iconic scenes from movies and TV shows and we call this segment Physics Behind the Scenes. So for our first projectile problem, this is from the, the Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2 2012. This movie has this particular scene called Bella's First Hunt and basically what happens is that Bella, a vampire played by Kristen Stewart, jumps off a cliff because she was hunting for a prey for her to have a nice meal. <laughs> so let's watch the scene. So based on that movie scene, the projectile problem that I was able to come up with is that if Bella's total airtime down the cliff was 4.0 seconds, what was her final vertical velocity upon landing? So Let's write down the given, and in terms of the sketch, by the way, it would look something like this. It's a horizontally launched projectile because basically Bella, the vampire, was running horizontally along this platform or the cliff, and then he jumps off. So yeah, for the given, the time is 4.0 seconds. It's just based on the clip, and then B not Y, or initial vertical velocity, is 0 meters per second. So always remember these four horizontally launched projectiles because it is... Launch horizontally, obviously, the vertical component will have a zero value at the beginning. And then for acceleration along y, it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, this is always negative regardless if it is going up or down because the force that causes this acceleration due to gravity is actually directed downward. And that's the gravitational pull of the Earth. And then for V sub y, that is our required to find. So that's our final vertical velocity, which is an interesting thing to solve for because we would like to know how fast the vampire or, or Bella would actually hit the ground or at what velocity she would be hitting the ground. So for our inventory of given variables, let's check what we have in here. By the way, we're particularly concerned with the y-axis because we're looking for the final vertical velocity. And we don't know anything about the x-axis, by the way. So we know that the initial vertical velocity is zero, acceleration along y is known, and then the final vertical velocity is known. Uh, it's, the, it's what we are solving for rather, it's required to find. Time is also known. So d sub y or vertical displacement is our missing variable in the problem. Meaning to say, we need to pick the equation which does not contain the missing variable which is d sub y, and that is this equation. So let's write it down. So it's here. Again, we're picking this equation because it does not contain the missing variable, which is d sub y. And missing variable is the variable in the problem that we don't know, and it's also not the one that we're solving for. And then take note, we can cancel v not y, or initial vertical velocity, because it's zero. So we will be left with acceleration along y times time, and that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 4.0 seconds. And then we're supposed to get negative 39 meters per second. So... Take note that the negative sign is because this velocity is directed downward. And in terms of the value, well, it looks reasonable because the total air time of Bella here is actually 4.0 seconds. So that's pretty long. The cliff was probably high as you can judge based on the cliff. And take note that in terms of magnitude, this 39 meters per second is actually fast. It's beyond the maximum speed of cars in expressways, for example. Well, in reality, this could actually cause a fatal impact, but of course, Twilight is Twilight, and as we know, of course, Bella is a vampire, and in the world of fiction, vampires are known for their incredible strength, and this scene is probably just intended to showcase Bella's non-human level of strength shortly after she tra transformed into a vampire. In the next physics problem that we have for projectile motion, this is from the... Episode 6 of Season 7 of Game of Thrones, whether you like the show or not. The episode is called Beyond the Wall. And basically what happens here is we have this so-called Night King, which is the leader of the ice zombies. He basically uses his ice spear to kill this dragon, which is a worthy opponent. So let's watch this. The problem that I was able to come up with based on that scene is that assume that the Night King throws the spear at a speed of 40.0 meters per second at an angle of 55.0 degrees. What is the spear's velocity when it hits Viserion, the dragon, after 2.5 seconds? And what height did the spear reach at that point? 
So the 40.0 meters per second speed, if you're wondering why it's too high, well, javelins are normally thrown at 28 to 30 meters per second, but because the Night King is not a human being and it has um, incredible strength based on my reference, then we could use 40.0 meters per second as a more reasonable speed value when the spear was launched in the air. And then for the angle, 55.0 degrees, well, it looks like it was it was aimed at a, at a low angle, but if you look at the time when it was already flying, it's actually quite steep. So I would say 55.0 degrees might be a more reasonable assumption. Also, uh, the dragon, by the way, was not so far horizontally, but it was actually pretty high if you rewatch that particular scene from Game of Thrones. So yeah, let's solve for it using those values. So that's our table. This would be the trajectory of our projectile, which is the spear thrown by the Night King or the ice zombie. And then initial velocity is 40.0 meters per second at an angle of 55.0 degrees. Now take note that uh, if you try to visualize that initial velocity upon launch, it could look something like this. Uh, that's the vector arrow for it. And that velocity has an X component directed this way, and that is represented or calculated using V not cosine theta. It's important to take note of this because if we need to use um, V sub X uh, later in the computation, this would be the proper equation for that, considering that this is our V not or initial velocity. And then we might also need our initial vertical velocity. And if we need that later, we're just going to use V not sine theta, which would be 40 meters per second times the sine of this particular angle. So that's for initial vertical velocity. And then for the time, we're concerned with the velocity at 2.5 seconds. So that's the time that we're going to use in our first part of this problem. And then the actual required to find is the velocity when time equals 2.5 seconds. So I'm going to write that as V subscript time equals 2.5 seconds. So that's a required to find or RTF. And take note that if you represent that velocity with a vector arrow, this is how it can look like vectorally. So it would be the velocity right before the dragon is uh, hit by the spear. So this is this could be the dragon. So that's it. And then take note that for that velocity along the trajectory, there is a V sub Y or vertical velocity associated with it. And there's also a horizontal velocity or V sub X that you can solve as well. Uh, using this. So to maximize that illustration, this is our target velocity uh, represented by an arrow. And then uh, it's just V, we call it V. And then this is V sub X. Okay. So again, this is V not cosine theta. Uh, you might be wondering, is, is the V sub X here initial, final, or what? Um, whatever you get for V sub X, if you do V not cosine theta, whatever number you get, it's the same horizontal velocity or V sub X throughout the entire trajectory because V sub X is constant, okay? So yeah, whatever you get for V not cosine theta, you can use that as your V sub X. Whatever time you are using in your problem, whether it's 2.5 seconds or after one second, whatever, okay? However, for V sub Y, um, it's something that we don't know. It's not just V not sine theta because this would just be the initial vertical velocity. However, Vertical velocity is changing because of the acceleration due to gravity. So after 2.5 seconds, this initial vertical velocity will no longer apply. It will actually slow down as it moves upward while it is being opposed by gravitational force. So what we need to do is to solve first for V sub Y or final vertical velocity when the time is 2.5 seconds. So we're going to treat V sub Y first as a required to find or RTF. Because through that, if we know V sub Y, we can solve for the actual V at 2.5 seconds using Pythagorean theorem because you would have an expression for V sub X. And yeah, if you know V sub Y as well, then you can know V out of that. Okay, so acceleration along Y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then if you check the inventory of our known variables, um, we don't care about X right now. So we're, we're going to look at Y because we need to know V sub Y, right? So... We know V not Y, it's just V not sine theta based on this. And then acceleration along Y is known. V sub Y is the required to find. And then we know time, 2.5 seconds is our concern. So D sub Y or uh, vertical displacement is our missing variable. Meaning to say, D sub Y is not only the problem, but it's also not the one that we are solving for at this particular moment. So we need to pick an equation which does not contain the missing variable. So we have something to plug in. And that means that we're going to use this, okay? 
So that's our equation to know V sub y. So solving for the vertical velocity when time is 2.5 seconds, we have this equation. Again, we pick this because the missing variable V sub y is not in here. Okay? And then we replace V naught y with V naught sine theta because as you can see to know V sub uh, V naught y or initial vertical velocity, this is the right expression. Okay, and then we plug in the given. So initial velocity is 40 meters per second and then sine of the launch angle, it's this. Okay, so this entire expression, by the way, will give you the initial vertical velocity. That's why we're doing that in here. And then a sub y times time is basically this. So it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 2.5 seconds. Never ever forget the negative sign for acceleration due to gravity because it can lead you to a lot of mistakes. Next, so final vertical velocity when time is 2.5 seconds would be 8.27 meters per second, okay? So that looks reasonable because as I mentioned, going upward, the vertical velocity is actually slowing down or decreasing because of the opposing effects of gravity. So from a certain vertical velocity upon launch, which is probably higher than this, it's going to be slowing down to this particular value. Okay, so that's the vertical velocity for our 2.5 seconds mark, we're gonna write it in here. Uh, so what now, Miss, um, what are we gonna do? So since we're aiming to solve for the velocity at 2.5 seconds, again, we need to know both V sub X as well as V sub Y. And now that we know V sub Y and V sub X is just this, we can proceed to solve for the magnitude of the Spears velocity when the time is 2.5 seconds. And that is gonna be C squared equals A squared plus B squared, with, which as you know, is the Pythagorean theorem. Why? Because simply because um, the velocity is represented by this vector arrow, and if you look at this right triangle, this is the hypotenuse, and you can solve for its value as long as you know the value or the length of the two other legs, okay? So this is our equation, Pythagorean theorem, and then we're going to rewrite it to get rid of this exponent 2 in the uh, hypotenuse, so it's going to be like this. And then we're going to rewrite it to make it a physics equation. There's nothing bloody, this and this are just... The same thing, it's just that instead of C, uh, take note that C is the hypotenuse of the right triangle in Pythagorean theorem, we replace it with V. It's the velocity we're solving for when time is 2.5 seconds, represented by this, because this is the longest side in the right triangle, so that's the C in our Pythagorean equation. And then the A and B in the Pythagorean theorem are actually the two other legs of your right triangle. So those are those A and B are the V sub X and V sub Y at 2.5 seconds respectively. So we just replace them with V sub X and V sub Y. Do not forget to keep the uh, exponent 2 for both variables. And then next, um, so yeah, and then we rewrite this equation so it becomes V naught cosine theta instead of V sub X. Nothing bloody. It's just that uh, V sub X is equivalent to V naught cosine theta. So we just replace it with that expression in our second version of the um, equation. Next, we plug in. So V naught or initial velocity is 40 meters per second. And then cosine of the launch angle or angle of projection, that's cosine 55.0. And then... Uh, you have exponent 2, we just affixed it, nothing bloody, and then plus vy squared. So this is our vertical velocity when time is 2.5 seconds. So we just plug it in here. Do not forget to square that. And if you perform this operation in the calculator, you are supposed to get 24.4 meters per second. So this is now the magnitude of the Spears velocity when the time is 2.5 seconds, when Viserion, the dragon, was actually hit. So that's still pretty high, even after it has slowed down from 40 meters per second going up. It's still high, and it just makes sense that it cuts through the dragon, especially considering that the ice spear in Game of Thrones is actually a magical weapon. It's not just an ordinary spear. So our answer is not yet complete because when you say velocity, it involves both the magnitude as well as the direction. So this is the magnitude, but in what direction is it pointing? So to solve for the direction of the spear's velocity when time is 2.5 seconds, we're still going to refer to the same illustration. And this angle, this theta, is basically the direction that we're aiming for. In projectile problems or in most vector-related problems, we normally aim for the angle that touches our horizontal axis. So it would be this. And that is our theta. Uh, if that is our theta, this would be the opposite side. And this would be the adjacent side. So because these two values are known, we're going to 
pick an equation or a trigonometric function where the opposite and the adjacent side are both utilized, and that is the tangent function. So tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent side, which if you rewrite in physics terms, that would be v sub y over v sub x at 2.5 seconds, of course. Nothing bloody in here, it's just that the opposite side is v sub y based on this figure, and then adjacent side is just technically the v sub x, right? So there's nothing bloody. Now we need to get rid of the tangent expression because we just want to solve for theta. So what you need to do in there is just um, get the arc tangent or multiply both sides of the equation by arc tangent or tangent raised to negative 1 and that will cancel out the tangent expression in this equation and you will be left with theta for the left side of your equation. For the right side, it would be arc tangent times v sub y over v sub x or v cosine theta. So nothing bloody v sub x is v cosine theta, okay? Miss why is there no not or zero sub zero in here? Yeah, it's okay as long as you know that you're talking about this velocity. Yeah, but it's also okay if you want to keep the sub zero in here just to be sure it's this one. So yeah, let's plug in the given. So again, vertical velocity when time is 2.5 seconds is 8.27 meters per second. We solved for this earlier. And then V cosine theta, so velocity is 40 meters per second. And cosine theta, so the, the angle is 55.0 degrees. So that's our cosine theta. By the way, please put um degrees in here as well just to make it more correct. And then it should give you 19.8 degrees above the posit positive x-axis. So in your calculator, you just need to divide this entire expression and then press um, press shift and then tangent. Okay, so for other calculators, shift appears as second function, second function or second f. Okay, so that's our, our answer. Does the um, angle look reasonable? Yeah, because as it goes like this, the angle is actually becoming smaller, right? So the angle between your actual velocity vector and the horizontal axis is narrower, so 19.8 degrees. Make sense? And then, yeah, do not forget to add above the positive x-axis because if this is your actual vector and this is the horizontal axis, imaginary, then that theta is actually above that x-axis. So that's it. So the final answer for the velocity of the sphere when it hits Viserion is 24.4 meters per second, 19.8 degrees above the positive x-axis. So that's velocity, uh, magnitude, and direction. Next, for the next required to find in a problem it says here what height did the spear reach at that point so it says height so meaning to say we're basically solving for the displacement along y of our spear and yeah that will give you the height of the spear so instead of treating d sub y as a missing variable now we're gonna treat it as required to find meaning to say it's what we are solving for and then v sub y we're gonna treat this this time as a missing variable uh, you might be saying, Miss Y, we know V sub Y, we actually solved for it earlier. Well, my tip is to avoid using something that you only solve for, because if there's any error associated with it, then that error would be carried over to the, the second part of the problem. So it's better to take or to treat V sub Y as a missing variable, as long as you will not lack given variables to solve for the required to find. So if you treat uh, v sub y is a missing variable, then you're going to use an equation which does not contain v sub y. And it's this fourth equation, okay? So solving for the height of the spear, we have v sub y equals initial vertical velocity times time plus acceleration times squared over 2. Um, take note again that we are choosing this equation because it does not contain our missing variable, which is v sub y. So you don't see v sub y in here. That's the right one to pick. And then v not y or initial vertical velocity is actually v not sine theta. So nothing bloody, we just replaced it with this because they are equivalent values and these are ready to plug in to know v not y. So let's substitute the given. So initial velocity is 40 meters per second times sine 55. So take note that doing this entire expression will give you the value of the initial vertical velocity, okay? times time, so time is this, 2.5 seconds, and then plus, this is the 80 squared over 2 expression, so this is acceleration, this is time, raised to 2, divided by 2, okay? If you perform that in your calculator, um, you're supposed to get 82 for the left side of this expression, and for the expression after the plus sign, you're supposed to get 31 meters, and then 82 minus 31 meters would give you 51 meters. So that is the height of our spear when it was it was thrown by 
the Night King. Uh, take note for the sig fig rules, by the way. So this is multiplication right here. So we follow the given with the least number of significant figures. And it's two sig fig because this is three sig fig. This is three as well. This is two. So this is two significant figures. And then for the right side of the expression, I'm going to ignore this and counting the sig fig because it's a constant in the equation. So this has two sig fig. This has two sig fig as well. So our final answer for this has two sig fig. And then... Yeah, in addition or subtraction, we follow the given with the least number of decimal places. So both of them have no decimal places. So our answer has no decimal place in it. It's just 51 meters. So obviously, the height is actually pretty high. It's 51 meters. By the way, just for context, it's actually a little more than half of the height of the Statue of Liberty, including the pedestal. So that's pretty high. But take note that the Night King and all White Walkers in Game of Thrones are actually characters that are not human. They have incredible strength. So this is not a surprising number, but uh, or sur surprising height for the spear to reach it. And it was launched at actually a very high velocity. But of course, take note that Practice makes you more proficient, just like in solving physics problems. So if you want to reach that kind of feat, um, you just really need to start practicing now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If you want to hunt someone's dragon, maybe you should try to emulate what the Night King has just done. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much and have a great day.